Hey folks, uh, this lesson is a review for our final, and this is we're just starting the circles chapter. <clears throat> so we did uh, quadrilaterals in the last chapter. If it sounds like I'm in a box, that's because I'm out in my truck. I have somebody teaching in my classroom on my prep period, and they watch movies all day, so it's dark in there and it's hard to work. So I, I, this is the only quiet place on campus I can find. So anyways don't forget all your lessons can be found at that groovy website right there okay so here we go so tell whether the line ray or segment is best described as a radius a chord a diameter a secant or a tangent of this circle here okay so we got this figure over here so this says segment ac so segment ac that is a radius okay segment ab that is a diameter okay uh, ray de notice there's no arrow on this side so it's a ray so this one's going to be a ray so it looks like it's tangent to the circle so we'll call it a tangent ray okay all right line ae where's line ae this should say um uh boy line ae i don't see, oh here it is right here here's line ae line ae is called a secant a secant is a line that contains a chord so this would be a chord right here and so a line that contains a chord is called a secant okay speaking of chords what word best describes a g well that would be a chord right there how about cb well that would be a radius okay so um Anyways, there's some more answers there. So in a plane, a line is tangent to a circle if and only if, and so that's how we abbreviate the words if and only if. If, if and only if the line is perpendicular to the radius way out at the outer end point. So right here, this line M is tangent to circle Q because out here at this radius right here, QP forms a right angle with line M. So if it's perpendicular out there, then it's a, it's a tangent. So the code word in circle is if you got a tangent, then that gives you a right angle, which means right triangle probably, and Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so for example here, in this figure, segment PT is a radius of circle P. So here's segment PT right there. So is ST a tangent? So it's tangent if there's a right angle right there. Okay, so, so that means that the Pythagorean Pythagorean theorem would work if, if it's a right angle. So is 12 squared plus 35 squared equal to 37 squared? Okay, and if it is, then that would be a right angle right there. So we just crank out our math right there, and so it finds out that yes, it is. So yes, it is a right angle. It's tangent right there. All right, so now this is tangent right there. So that tells me there's a right angle right there, which means we've got a right triangle. We can use the Pythagorean theorem. So find the radius. Okay, so the radius is r. Notice this side is not 50r, it's 50 plus r. Okay, so 50 plus r. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared is our Pythagorean theorem. Remember that right there? Be careful, you guys. you got to write this twice, 50 plus r, 50 plus r, and then foil that out. Okay, so when you foil it out, when we combine the outer times outer with inner times inner, we're going to get 100 r right there okay all right so now we subtract r squared and then we'll subtract 2500 and then divide by 100 and we get 39 feet right there okay all right so that's a big circle all right so tangent segments from the same external point are congruent so uh, these two guys are congruent to each other so let's uh, solve this right here so here's 3x plus 4 equals 28 so if they're tangent segments then you set those equal and solve and we get x equals 8. All right, so remember central angles central angles are the same as their arcs right there inscribed angles are half of their arc so whatever that is take half and that's what that is right there so if the vertex is on the circle it's always half that arc and semicircles are 180 okay all right so let's use some of that there's other angles we'll talk about in the next lesson you guys but uh, not in this lesson so find the measures of each arc in this circle c and uh, where a b is a diameter so diameter gives us half the circle so 180s right there okay so arc db this arc is the same as this angle right here 135 degrees okay arc ad well remember if this is 135 i got a straight line right there 180 so this has to be 45 so this is 45 right there okay arc dab so i'm going to go d a and then b so we're going to add this half of a circle 180 with the 45 and we get 225 right there okay arc 
ADB, that's just the top half of the circle, which is 180 right there. Okay, all right, so the points P, Q, and R are on circle S, okay? And it says uh, segment PQ is congruent to segment QR. And the measure of arc PQR is 212. Find each. Okay, so there's no figure given. We have to construct this figure. So think of a circle right here, and then this is the key feature right here. Let's start with this. Arc PQR is 212, so it's over half the circle. Okay, so think of half the circle is 180, and then go past half a circle. Okay, so here's, here's this picture right here. Here's P. So if I went straight across, there would be 180. So I got to go a little bit more to make it more than 180, 212. Okay, so here's arc P, Q, R right there. Okay, so that's going to be, and then it says uh, that these chords are congruent. So that chord equals that chord. So we had to put Q right in the middle right there. And then we have a theorem that says if chords of a circle are equal, then the arcs that are contained by them are equal. So these two arcs are equal. So if they're equal and they add up to 212, then each one has to be 106. Okay, and so the measure of arc uh, PR is down here. Here's PR right here. It's going to be the rest of the circle. So it's going to be 360 minus the 212, so 148. Okay, and then uh, arc uh, QPR. So QPR. So we're going to add the 106 plus 148, and we're going to get uh, 254 on that. All right, or we could have done... Um, 360 minus this side right here, 360 minus 106 would get us also 254. All right, you guys, I hope that makes sense. Take care.